All right. Now it's recording. Sorry. Thanks, Shannon. All right. Yeah, Montosa Canyon is not higher elevation. So that, I mean, that's another one where, just like Box Canyon, where you're going to want to get there super early. And glad that I was able to start recording this session right here so that you can have this information right here, Box Canyon, Montosa Canyon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this map so that you can see this map as well in the recording. Box Canyon right here, Forest Road 62, Montosa Canyon, Elfa, take the Elephant Head Road off Frontage Road down Mount, Mount, Mount Hopkins, and then you'll see it turns into gravel right there. And you can go all the way up to the observatory if you want. I've never been all the way up there, and that does get into um, uh, you know higher elevation where it's cooler. I've mostly just birded probably to right here where there's uh, there's a hairpin turn right here. I bird it up to right there. And this is this is really good, not just for five stripe sparrow um, and yellow bill cuckoo in June, but another late arriving bird is buried bunting. And buried buntings are are, I would say, fairly common right through this section as well. And if you've never seen a buried bunting, not only is it kind of a really cool purplish color, but has this really pink spot on the back of its head, which is really amazing, actually. So um, it's, that's a, it's a great spot, too. Okay, so I'm going to move ahead here. Oh, yeah, I can't forget this, either. June really is a good month for Box Canyon. Uh, this is a Lucifer hummingbird, a female Lucifer hummingbird that I saw there, uh, I think it was last June. And Lucifer hummingbirds have been nesting as well, right in that same area as Five Stripe Sparrows. So you got this curved bill right here. And holy cow, probably one of the coolest experiences I've ever had with a hummingbird. I parked on the side of the road, right around that, that mileage point for the Five Stripes, and was walking along the road when I saw this hummingbird kind of buzz by me, this one that you see pictured here and laying on this branch. And uh, I started taking pictures of it. And all of a sudden I heard this like huge rattle. I was like, what is going on? I thought maybe it was a rattlesnake, but it ended up being um, the male Lucifer hummingbird. And uh, he was like going all around this female and all around me, pushing his gorget out. And just like, I tried to switch my camera into video mode I couldn't, I wasn't able to get it, but it was, it was amazing. And so I was just walking right along that road. So it's not like you have to trample around anywhere. You don't have to play any calls. They, there's just a lot of birds right along that road. And that was pretty early in the morning. I'm going to um, stop that share and I'm gonna move us over to, um, I wanna show you the eBird list from that so you can see what time I was there and get an idea of um, get an idea of the other birds that I saw while I was there. Let's see. Oh, this is it. Perfect. And uh, yeah, so here here's blues for hummingbird pictures right here. And um, let's see what time I got there at six twenty four a.m. So I. Let's say I was there for an hour and 10 minutes. I would say any time after eight o'clock would probably be too hot for Box Canyon. So get there around 6.30, that seemed to work out pretty well. There was a lot of people that rolled up while I was there and, and were looking to, here's that five stripe sparrow. Uh, I've seen varied buntings. There's good habitat for Scott's Oriole and blue gross beaks. What's interesting is this type of habitat does, um, get some of those late arriving migrants like buried bunting, blue gross beak, uh, loose for hummingbird. Um, you see yellow bill cuckoo, what wasn't around then yet. This is June 15th. So yellow, looking for yellow bill cuckoo, I would say get it there a little bit later in June, like June 25th or something like that it would probably be better for, for cuckoos because they, they do arrive pretty late. But this is, this is a great spot for June. All right. So now I'm gonna move us back over to the presentation. Whoop.
Sorry about that. Press the wrong button. Boom. Okay, so let's let's move outside of Box Canyon in Montosa. So another really good spot in June that I like to bird in Southeast Arizona is a little bit further away. So Montosa and Box Canyons, fairly close to Tucson. You can get to Box Canyon within an hour. Montosa is probably about an hour as well, maybe a little bit further. If you live in Green Valley or Sarita, you're super close. But here, this is, you see this is the portal. This is the Chiricahua Mountains. And what I want to um, just check in with you guys for a little bit is that my other favorite spot in June is South Fork Cave Creek Canyon in the Chiricahuas. Now this is a longer drive. It's, uh, I think around two and a half hours to get here. Um, but there's a lot of spots to stay around a portal or campgrounds, dispersal campgrounds, or just make a, make a day of it. Um, but this is a really cool area, this whole South Fork, even though, again, it's not super high elevation, but you can bird this area until about 10, 11 o'clock, and um, it's really easy. That's one reason why I like it. This is all paved right here until you get to the turnoff for South Fork from Portal. And then this is easy gravel road. You park right here. There's a little bridge right here that is one of the birdiest spots in the Chiricahua Mountains. And I really like checking this area out in June. In fact, I'm gonna go there uh, the first week of June with my friend Daniel. So uh, I, I go there almost every June. And it, in June, a lot of the birds are breeding. And what's cool about that area right there along that road in South Fork Cave Creek is that there are breeding birds everywhere along there. There's um, this is a, a Western Wood Peewee. And what happens in June, the birds are foraging and you watch them forage. They go over to a branch and to go and feed their babies or to sit on their eggs and then they go and forage again. So it's easier to find the nest and to watch them from a, a, you know, a good distance away so you're not disrupting them. But it's really cool to see the birds on their nest like this. And that road I've always seen, uh, it's probably where I've found the most nests. Um, Elegant Trogan nests right along that road. Um, Whiskered Screech Owl, um, Black-Headed Grosbeak, so there's, there's a lot that I found there. This, this Western Wood Peewee was right over the bridge. And also that day in June, there was a gray catbird that was down uh, along with a painted red start foraging in that bridge, just right by that, um, right by the parking lot. You just walk maybe not even a hundred yards and there's a bridge right there that you can just stay at for like hours and watch the birds. So also right by that parking spot are whiskered screech owls. Um, I mean, you don't always find them, but there are a lot of whiskered screech owls all throughout that South Fork. So if you're out there during the day, you can see, see how this one is like leaning, this is a baby, leaning right up against this trunk. That's how most owls will be. They'll be See this one too, right up against the trunk. The best way to find these owls is to just scan, scan the trunks and, and you'll find one. It, when it happens, it's amazing. When it doesn't happen, you're like, why am I looking at all of these trunks? But uh, the payoff is worth it. There's also a few little um, old uh, National Forest Service cabins along there. And usually there's a blue-throated hummingbird nest or two uh, somewhere around those cabins, uh, right in, you know, on, on the cabin itself. So um, you can walk around there and, and check all that out. It's a, it's a really cool area. Um, uh, Red-faced warblers. So when I, when I think of, actually here, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna stop share. Anyone have any questions about Montosa, Box Canyons, uh, South Fork Cave Creek Canyon and the Chiricahuas?
before we move on? Luke, it's Debbie. Can I ask a question? Sure, how, Debbie. How are the roads um, leading to these areas? You said the, the one is easy to access to, but Montosa and Box, because we are always in our camper van RV, and so I'm always curious about what kind of clearance you need to access these sites. Good question. So Box Canyon Road is is not a bad road. It, 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 it gets, there's not a lot of room in some of the spots, especially once you get into that slot canyon. So having a really big like RV or anything might be a little tough in there. Um, high clearance might be good for Box Canyon, but you probably don't need it. I drive a Jeep, so it's kind of hard for me to say, but I, if I had a rental car, I'd have no problem taking it in the box. <laughs> uh, for Montosa, the paved road almost goes all the way to the culvert. And once you get to the culvert, it, it's, there's better parking there. It's not a parking lot, but there's parking along the edges where you can, uh, that, that'd probably be more accessible. The roads uh, in the Chiricahuas right there at South Fork, Cave Creek is, that, that road's easy. Um, if you're going over the Chiricahuas, like going over um, Piner Canyon, it's, it's a really washboard road. Uh, I would say having some high clearance there it is something you should have. Um, so that, that's a little bit there. And I'm gonna get into a little bit more of the accessibility of roads here um, in the higher elevations as well too. Okay, thank you. And then um, to answer questions over here in the chat, um, yes, that was on the, South Fork Cave Creek is on the east side of the Chiricahua, so the best way to access that is actually take I-10 all the way into New Mexico, and then drop south, go into Portal, Arizona, and then that'll take you uh, right to South Fork Cave Creek. You can go over the, um, you can go over Pinery Canyon up over the pass. It, it's pretty, it takes longer, not as good of a road, um, but that, that's a way you can do it too. And since I haven't recorded, the map will be in the recording on the, on the, the video portion of it. Um, if you'd like me to send a, well, when I send out the email later on, I'll, I'll put, put it as an attachment so you can see that map too. It's one I just got off the internet. Um, any other questions before we head out? Head, keep going? Okay. So when it comes to, uh, there we go. When it comes to birding in June, high elevations. So I've talked about a few of these lower elevations and even the lower elevations I'm talking about are still, you know, 3000 feet. Um, so they're kind of more mid elevation. If you're doing low elevation like Sweetwater wetlands in June, get there at 530 and bird for an hour and a half for two hours at the most. And, and um, it'll kind of dry up, so to speak, after that. But getting to these high elevations, you can bird there all day long. Of course, getting there early, um, there is better bird activity earlier in the morning, but there will be activity throughout the day. Red-faced warbler is one that you'll see at these higher elevations, especially in the Catalinas uh, and Chiricahua. Actually, all of these mountain ranges, I'm only, this right here, Here's some of the sky islands of Southeast Arizona that you could see birds like red-faced warbler, Grace's warbler, Cordieran flycatcher. These are higher elevation birds that you'll see um, at this time of year. And uh, so if, if you wanna go birding and you wanna be out all day, get up into one of these. And I just wanted to touch on them real quick here. Mount Lemon, the Catalina uh, Mountains right next to the, to Tucson, of course. Uh, that is a great place to be. I was up there yesterday at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon and my wife was cold. So uh, it's about a 30 degree difference when you're up on top of Mount Lemon from here. So if it's 100 degrees in Tucson, it's gonna be 70 degrees up there. You can't ask for better birding weather. But the problem, while it's so accessible, that's great, and the road is paved, that's great, also just means there's a lot of people. So I'm not gonna 
get into a, a lot of specific hot spots on Mount Lemon, just because um, they're pretty easy to find. You know, the spots like Rose Canyon Lake, Incinerator Ridge, very popular both for the birding crowd and for the general crowd. Madera Canyon, also fabulous spot to bird no matter what the season is. In June, there's just tons of people out there too. And honestly, you can't get as high in Madera Canyon on a road as you can at Mount Lemon or Car Canyon or Mount Graham or the Chiricahuas. Um, you can get up higher in Madera Canyon if you go hiking. So if you, if you have um, you know, the physical capability to hike up Cary Nation Trail or Agua Caliente Saddle or up to, to Baldy Saddle or Mount Wrightston, there are great spots to get away from people and to bird higher elevations to find red-faced warblers and um, red-breasted nut hatches. So you get into um, some good uh, Sky Island habitat up there, but you just have the height to get up there. That, that's a problem, and not, and not all of us can do that. So uh, that, that that can be an issue. Um, Car Canyon, I don't know how many, many of you have um, been to Car Canyon before. So I'm trying to access the chat and it's not letting me access the chat. But Car Canyon can be really good too, and does get you into that higher elevation. That's in the Wachuca Mountains. So if you go over to Sierra Vista, which is about an hour and a half from, from Tucson, and you go south of Sierra Vista, you'll, there's a bunch of different canyons that'll get you up into the Santa Rita's. And Car Canyon is great. There's a couple of campgrounds up there. There's Ramsey Vista campground, and then there's um, Reef Townsite campground, which is probably the best spot in all of Southeast Arizona for buff-breasted flycatcher. So I would say that if uh, June, June is great for buff-breasted flycatcher, they're, they're nesting there, they're very visible, but you definitely need, so Debbie, you definitely need a high clearance or four-wheel drive to get into Car Canyon. Uh, that's a great spot. There are some cool trails that go out of that. Um, and so you can check that out. But what, I want to spend a little bit of time on another Sky Island of Southeast Arizona that often gets overlooked in the Pinaleno Mountains, and that's Mount Graham. Now, Mount Graham, I should have gotten a, a map here. Let's do this. I'm going to show you where Mount Graham is at real quick. Let's go to a uh, different share screen. First of all, before I go, go to share my screen again, who's been to Mount Graham before? Anyone? Lorraine, Joan, few of you, not very many. Any of you never, never heard of Mount Graham or the Pinaleno Mountains? Okay, so a few of you there too. All right, I was thinking that not everyone had heard of Mount Graham and the Pinaleños. So I want to just show you where it's at. Let me get to uh, share a screen here. There's that eBird checklist that we were checking out. And we'll go to Google Maps real quick. Let's see if, uh, let's go. Ahead. My last name is Safford. Now Graham is near Safford, Arizona. So I'm just gonna type that in. There it is. So here's Mount Graham. I'm gonna scroll out here. Here's Tucson over here. It's probably about the same distance away as the Chiricahuas. The Chiricahuas are down here. Here's Portal. This is where South Fork Cape Creek would be over here. And here's Tucson. So you just go I-10 up past Wilcox. You'll see the big Safford sign and you'll think of me and you go north right here on I-91. And you'll see access for Mount Graham right here. Once you get into, um, once you, right before you get into Safford, you'll see a, a, a sign that says, take this for Mount Graham and you go up here and all this right here gets all these little roads through here, lead you way up here. Mount Graham, very high elevation. You can see here, see if it tells us the elevation here. 
No, it doesn't. It's pretty high. It's like, I think it's 9,000 something. It's a, it's a very high elevation. There's a bunch of, uh, it's a great spot for um, looking at the stars too. They have, a, there's a lot of different, um, well, I think there's one big observatory up there. Um, it doesn't get visited very often. But what's also very cool about Mount, Mount Graham, why I say you should go visit there in, in June, is um, that it's very, very underburdened. There, you look at the eBird output for Pima, Pima County, or Santa Cruz County, or Cochise County, and it skyrockets. It's just through the roof how many people, um, how many people bird those areas. But when you get into Graham County, it's just, there's a huge noticeable difference of uh, birder activity. So I wanna encourage people to go to Mount Graham because it's underbirded. And then there's also this really cool uh, story about red squirrels. So I know it's not a bird, and this is all about where to go birding in June. This is my only picture of a red squirrel that I've seen up on Mount Graham. It was run over, which is really sad, but I decided <laughs> it's a really sad picture the more I look at it, but it's the only picture I have of a red squirrel up there. So there's a, they've, these squirrels are a subspecies of red squirrel that's endangered. And after the 2017 fire that is up on Mount Graham, there was only 35 of them left uh, that uh, Arizona Game and Fish were able to detect. Uh, and they thought they were gonna go extinct. In the past year or two, they've actually seen a slight increase. And now we're at, they uh, did a census last year and we're at 78. So when you're up there, look for these red squirrels. But what's really interesting is that uh, Mount Graham gets a lot of the same birds in the Sky Islands that we get here. Red-faced warbler, Grace's warbler, there's spotted owls up there. There's it's really good habitat. The, the road is paved for a, a portion of it, but also a, a good portion is also um, a gravel road. It's not a bad road. That as far as um, as far as when it comes to um, the needing a four-wheel drive or high clearance. You probably don't, but the thing is, it's very windy. So if you get like car sickness or something like that, it might be a little touch and go for you going up Mount Graham. That's just something to think about. Um, my son gets car sick and, oh yeah, he got car sick going uh, up and down. So the, grant, the, the, the campgrounds up there uh, have uh, bathrooms. There, there's one, pretty well um, developed campground. There's a lake up there called Riggs Lake. And um, it's, it's a great spot. There's fishing up there and stuff too. And then um, there's a state park down at the base of the road along the, the highway that goes into Safford called Roper Lake State Park, where you can, uh, if you want to stay at a state park, and there's little cabins there, you can put an RV there. That's a good spot too. So just something to think about. We don't often think about going that far out and into different areas. Um, last thing before I open it up for questions, two last things. So for each of these months, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the rare bird of the month, the one to be looking for, and then I'm gonna give you an idea of somewhere to go outside of Arizona, that if I could go anywhere in the States right now to go, bir to go birding in June, where would that be? I'm gonna give that to you too. So first, the rare bird. Anyone want to make any guesses for what the rare bird of June is? You can either raise your hand or put it in the chat. Or you're coming up empty. That's all right too. I'm gonna to show you. No one has any any guesses. Tough to fly catcher. Thanks, Linda. Cuckoo. Cuckoo is a rare bird. Let that. When we say rare bird, uh, I mean one that hardly ever gets seen, although yellow bill cuckoo to me gets me hyped up every time I see it too. Crescent, crescent breasted warbler, that one's being seen in the chair right now. Berry line hummingbird, that might be one I have for a later month. 
And here's the one that we have this year. I'm sorry, I've kept I, leading you guys on. I, I didn't think anyone was going to be able to to get this, and no one did. But when I think of June, whenever I'm out, this is what I'm looking for, right here. That one right there. That's a yellow grosbeak. So I have never seen a yellow grosbeak, and not very many people have seen a yellow grosbeak in the American Birding Association area in the United States. Um, but if you're ever going to find a yellow grosbeak around here in Arizona, it's going to be in June, and it's going to be here in Southeast Arizona. I mean, it's you, you don't really find them anywhere else. There hasn't been one reported for quite a few years now. But if you look at the eBird reports, uh, we're due for one. So we are due for this guy. This he just amazingly beautiful bird that I am always looking for. Here are some spots where you want to just keep your eye out if you're out birding in June, thinking about yellow grosbeak. Where what kind of habitat would a yellow grosbeak be in? I'm gonna show you right here. Let's go to here. Well, that's yeah, that's that's the yellow gross week. Where else did it go? I had another thing pulled up. That's not it. That this is it. Okay. So you can see the eBird reports here. Here's this should be Sycamore Canyon. Come on up. Spinning wheel of death here. Why is that not coming up? Let's try that one. Okay, Patagonia roadside rest area. Uh, this is kind of blocking that. But you can see June here. Go to that. Yellow grosbeak, June 1994. But see, Patagonia area, that lower elevation, but not like super low is where you're uh, normally going to see these guys. Let's go here. Oh, that's still there. Okay. Well, here's Sycamore Canyon. See June, Rick Wright, right there. And here's another Patagonia, uh, Patton's Yard, June, right here. See, so what's interesting is it, it's these, um, you know, you see along the two back dance, the trail there. So they're in repairing corridors, repairing uh, canyons. So be looking for that. If someone here finds a yellow grosbeak in June this year, I will be so stoked. That'll be a that'd be amazing. Um, okay, so that's a rare bird of the month, and maybe you have. Let, I'm gonna open it up to you, you all. Um, outside of Southeast Arizona, where would you go in June if you could go anywhere in the United States to bird? What, what would the spot be for you in June? Cape May, yeah. Cape May is a good one. And I can unmute, unmute you too, if, you, if you're able to raise your hand, I can, I can unmute you as well. Or you can unmute yourself and tell us. Upper Peninsula of Michigan, yep. Yeah. Alaska, <laughs> yeah, as far north as possible to get out of the heat, right? <laughs> Early June, Ohio, Oregon. Oh, I like the Oregon idea. Yeah, there's uh, it's a good time for woodpeckers and flammulated owl there on the east slopes of the Cascades. So, good. Maine. No one, Maine. No one, what's that? Maine. Maine, yeah, for puffins, right, Karen? Well, partly puffins, but though they're around all summer. But also, there's a lot of woodpeckers, like the three-toed and the the black-backed and all, and they're way up in the great north woods. So you really yeah. need to get out and get around. But but that's one of the best places to find them. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget, yeah, don't a, forget loons. Answer. Don't forget loons. Lots of loons in Maine. Oh, yeah. Loons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yes. loons in Minnesota, too. That would be a good... So actually, so Barb, northeast Montana, we're... Where's Barb? I'm trying to find Barb on, on the thing here. I'm gonna Barb. I'm gonna unmute you only if you want to share. But um, I don't know, it's not letting me unmute you. 
you might have to unmute yourself. I, it's but, Dave. I'm, I, I'm Barb was using my computer oh. and she changed the name on it. So <laughs> this is Dave Cook. Hey, uh, Dave. Yeah, we had somebody come to our uh, our meeting here in in Idaho, and he was talking about Northeast Montana has a lot of uh, eastern birds that go through there in late May and through June. Yes, it's a short period of time, but there's a lot of them there. Perfect. Great segue. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Um, first to this, to not, not to that, but here it is, Montana, North Dakota. That's where I would go in June. So th this right here is a picture I took it in Wilcox, uh, Cochise Lake, uh, of a flock of Franklin's goals. I love Franklin's goals. Hardly ever get to see them being stuck here in Southeast Arizona. But Northeast Montana, East Montana, North Dakota, anywhere in these prairie potholes, amazing, amazing birding in June. Um, I'm going to share with you not one of my eBird checklists, but an eBird checklist that I found that kind of encapsulates the idea of birding in the potholes in June. And uh, this is Oh, well, this is Minnesota. So whether it's Minnesota, North Dakota, Montana, the, the, it's all kind of the same sort of area. So I was looking at Montana, North Dakota, and Minnesota. This right here is exactly what I think of. You got trumpeter swans nesting, blue wing teal, northern shovelers, redheads, all these ducks that are nesting. Here's Franklin's goal. Yes, Sora's. So the, the marsh in these prairie pothole areas in the morning is just alive with sound. Yellow-headed blackbirds, soras, there's American bitterns that are usually through here. I don't think there's any on this list, but you also get a lot of turns, whether it's foresters or black, you know, sometimes you get some other type of turns in there as well. Uh, you got sedge wrens, especially as you get further east and in North Dakota and Minnesota. See yellow-headed blackbirds and the, the, if you never heard yellow-headed blackbirds on their breeding territory, it is one of the most amazing sounds you've ever heard in your life. So me, personally, I love ducks. Ducks are my favorite thing. And being in their breeding area um, is just amazing. So I just thought I'd share that with you each, each month, get a little taste of what portion of the United States would be really fun to, to bird in that month. Um, so when, you know, we talked about puffins in Maine, uh, the puffin center is closed this year because of uh, the, the COVID stuff. So that's a bummer, but um, yeah. Oh, Russ saw yellow-headed blackbirds last weekend. Russ, were they uh, making all their cacophony of calls when you were there? croaks and all that. No, maybe you didn't hear me. All right. That's one other thing about Maine is a lot of these warblers that are migrating north are nesting up there. I lived in Maine on, on a lake for many years and in the summer. And I had perillas, black-throated greens, black-throated blue, black burnian, black and Ooh. white, all of them, all nesting it within on my property were within short distance so and june is the time to see them because by the time july is around there's too many leaves and everybody's quiet but june is a really yeah. great time for those birds to be coming through and i i suppose it was canceled this year but there is a good birding festival the acadia burning festival that's out on mount desert island which yeah. is where the national park is but it's over on the other side of the island where it isn't quite so busy and they do some really great field trips that take you in and you can also get hiking up to see the bicknell's thrush yes and i'm glad you brought that up so one thing I, I plan on doing with this as well is um see if i can get my screen to share where i want it to share okay so this is uh, Bird Watchers Digest, their festival finder. These are different festi birding festivals that happen in June. Now, 
shoot. The bummer thing here is that all these festivals are canceled for good reason this year. Um, but it's not too early to be thinking about future years, future Junes in your life when you're going to have an opportunity to possibly travel or to go to a birding festival. And it also gives you an idea if you look at where these festivals are at and when they're having them, you know, you only have a bird festival if it's a good time to go birding there. And so here's some good other good spots. You got the Kirtland's War Warbler Festival here in, in Michigan. Someone said Upper Michigan, of course, that's such a great spot in June. Uh, woodpeckers in Oregon. I think Mike mentioned uh, Oregon as a great spot to go birding in June and uh, for the woodpeckers and certainly so right here in Bend, Oregon, which also has the Chutes Brewery there, which is you can go birding in the morning and go to Chutes Brewery after that if you want. And then um, here's um, another birding festival, West Virginia, you know, the warblers migrating through Montana. See, like I said, um, this is one that I want to go to sometime. Um, I haven't been in eastern Montana. I've been in North Dakota, but I haven't been in eastern Montana during June and need to do that. Alaska, someone mentioned Alaska. Here's Minnesota, West Virginia, Colorado. There's not a – so that's all Lake Tahoe Bird Festival. I don't think of birding when I think of Lake Tahoe, but – yeah, that's good too. Um, there's not a whole lot of birding festivals in June. And as you see, most of these birding festivals are, are all at higher latitudes. Uh, you don't see um, many in Southern California or Arizona or Florida or Texas during this time because all the birds have been move, moving north. But yeah, just something to think about. Any last questions before we, uh, before we close up shop today? This is Debbie again. Just a generic question about chiggers. Am I going to oh, find yes. them here in the same places I would have found them in the Midwest in the grassy areas or are they in a different habitat here? Grassy areas for sure. So like um, the mid elevation, like those kind of type of areas where you would see yellow grosbeak or yellow billed cuckoo or um, I lost my train of thought, or five striped sparrow, like a lot of those you should take precautions for chiggers like Florida Canyon is where I've had my worst case of chiggers um, and uh, Peña Blanca Lake and uh, uh, along Ruby Road. So as you go further south on the I-19 towards Nogales and you head west, like where you've heard of like California Gulch, uh, Peña Blanca Lake, Sycamore Canyon, and then Patagonia area in Sonoida. So, um, what you want to do is just wear longer pants. You can tuck them in. I've never really tucked them into my um, shoes before. But what you, what you can do is right when you return back home, wherever you're staying after you go out, take a cold shower, rub those legs, and um, usually that, that'll do the trick. Um, definitely hasn't worked a couple times for me, though. <laughs> so, yeah. Just be careful where you can work, put bug spray on and stuff too. That, that, that'll help. Thank you. Yeah. Any question. other questions? Yeah, question. Yeah. Um, the campgrounds like Madera Canyon and all those, are they all closed now? So you one can't go like to Chiricahua's or some of these places you're mentioning. They have to be all day trips, right? Because of the virus. As far as, so camping, Dispersed camping is open um, and you can get like uh, Airbnb still. Um, now the National Forest campgrounds, as far as I know, are still closed, but things are opening up here in Arizona. So you might, that might be changing. You just check beforehand, um, look online to see if state parks are open or if National Park, the National Forest campgrounds are. I would say um, that right now, probably the day trip is what you want to focus on. Yeah. Yep. Also cautionary for bears when you get up high on Mount Graham. Oh yeah. Big cautionary. The, those are always fun to run into, especially when you're in the car. I mean, I run into, I like that squirrel. 
but uh yeah so especially july actually august september is when i see most bear sign um, so there's something to think about uh someone asked uh who uh about burrowing owls shannon uh I do have, there's a spot uh, north of Marana or near Marana that's not a secret spot that I can share some specifics about Burrowing Owl with you. Uh, just email me and it'll be easier for me to send it to you through email. Okay, thanks. Had the five stripe this morning in Montosa Canyon, 1035. Ah, Judy, you beat me, beat us all to it. There you go. It's good in May too then. Any other thoughts, questions? I had one question about what about Reddington Pass? Don't do Reddington Pass in June. <laughs> it is hot and there's no cover. And that would be one that I would cover in January. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Karen, you got one? You still have your hand up? That was, that was my Reddington Pass question. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, I'm gonna unmute people here. We'll see how much background noise we get. There it is, you've all been unmuted. I just wanna tell you, uh, thank you so much for being part of this. Um, you may have other questions that weren't answered or touched upon, feel free to email me and let me know. I'll, I'll send out a... Um, yeah, I'm going to mute everyone here again real quick. Uh, what, what, one thing I would, last couple things I would say is, um, before I unmute you all again, is uh, I'll have this recorded and send this out to you in an email later this afternoon, uh, hopefully by 3.30. If not before 3.30, then it might come tomorrow morning. It just depends on how things shake out. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm always up for questions. And, uh, yeah, glad that we could do this. I'm gonna mute everyone. If you do have a lot of background noise in, uh, on your uh, on your end, if you want to mute yourself, that would be that'd be helpful. Um, and I, I can stick around for any other questions for a little bit more time too. So thanks again for being here. I'm gonna stop the the recording. And then uh, yeah, thanks again, all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks.